The Obama administration further relaxed financial restrictions to Cuba this week by allowing U.S. banks to provide direct financing to Cuba for export products that are not agricultural, as those remain blocked by the embargo. How will this impact U.S. investment opportunities in Cuba right now? Yospel Ibarra is shareholder for Greenberg Traurig, where he advises clients on complex business transactions in the U.S., Europe, and Latin America. And he joins us now to discuss. Welcome. It's so great to have you on the show. Yospel, if you could please explain how this new loosening of financial regulations to Cuba will make it easier to get business done there. Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, we're going to put out a client alert later on uh, today, but we're basically just seeming this as another modest uh, wave of changes, as you mentioned in your intro. The embargo is still in place, um, notably the uh, the lifting that was done in these regulations for some of the trade export credits uh, leave out agricultural goods, which is a major um, export even with the embargo in place. Um, and it just sort of goes to highlight the, the trouble that we have in these uh, uh, expansions of the regulations, but still with the embargo in place, it makes it very difficult. I think notably some of the other changes uh, that come about, everyone expects air traffic uh, between the two countries to be regular, uh, to become regular air traffic and not charter traffic in the probably next six months or so. So some of the regulations aim at, uh, at that industry. And I think that the other uh, interesting, well, two interesting things is that uh, professional media and shows in Cuba are, are being permitted. So I'm sure we can expect to see a lot more uh, TV shows uh, right. coming out of Cuba. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to note, and something that actually was noted in the Cuban press this morning, is that for the first time, I think, uh, there's a recognition in the regulations that American uh, entities are going to be, at least on a case-by-case -case basis, allowed to deal with Cuban state-run enterprises and, and Cuban agencies. Uh, I see, because it's one thing for the Obama administration to say it's okay for these American products to be sold to Cubans, but now the Cuban government has to say, okay, you can also sell to the Cubans. It has to go both ways. Right. The, the best example of that is, you know, there is no wholesale market available in Cuba to uh, Cubans mm -hmm. right now. So the fact that the regulations are opening it up a little bit and mm -hmm. saying to the extent that the Cuban state enterprises are buying these things and making it available to the Cuban people, we're going to at least allow that on a case by case basis. Hopefully the reciprocal uh, opening from the Cuban side will be that they will allow for these wholesale markets to be made available to, to Cubans. So from a U.S. perspective, as an individual American investor, are there opportunities in Cuba right now or is it just certain sectors and certain companies that stand to benefit? I, I think it's really limited right now. Um, the individual investor, I, I believe, has very limited opportunity in Cuba right now because some of the sectors that are opening up, like agricultural goods, like uh, telecommunications, are really sort of big industry uh, mm -hmm. changes. I, I, I think at an individual level, uh, what you do see a lot, and I'm here in Miami, is that a lot of Cuban Americans are taking this opportunity to, uh, especially the ability to remit uh, money to their relatives in Cuba, to basically fund the ability of Cubans to start uh, with uh, with uh, entrepreneurial activities. But I think that that's done at a very individual family level right. and at the individual investor level. Uh, so, I, well, let's question about the banks, though, because it's very hard for any sort of business to take place without U.S. banks actually setting up a presence in Cuba. Are there any U.S. banks in Cuba right now? I mean, they are now allowed to be there. Credit cards are allowed to be used, but they are not yet working there. What's happening on that in that field? Sure. So uh, I think the only bank that has come out, uh, to my knowledge, and said that they will start operations in Cuba, and by that I mean that they'll have a debit card available uh, to use in Cuba, is Stonegate Bank, which is a, a bank here in, in South Florida. Um, with the opening of these regulations that have come out just uh, for yesterday, allowing trade export in certain sectors, maybe that will spur mm -hmm. 
since now there will be perhaps more commercial activity, that a bank will undertake, I think, the, the real step, the real impediment to opening in Cuba, which is the regulatory burden that any financial institution, U.S. financial institution, will have to go through in terms of record keeping and compliance uh, uh, to open in a market that right now is fairly limited. Absolutely. Uh, and, and of course, like you said, we're waiting for sort of Cuba to sort of match what the U.S. is offering. But I'm wondering if you think that the fact that Cuba can no longer rely on Venezuela or Russia for aid will be a big motivator for Cuba to work a bit more with the U.S. on these reforms. Right. So if, if you talk to the policymakers, they'll say that the reason that Cuba has done what they've done is that they had the experience of the Soviet Union falling apart in uh, you know 1990. Cuba went through what they call the special period, which was the worst economic decline uh, in a post-59 uh, Cuba. Uh, and then they are with the Venezuelans, with the Venezuelans helping in terms of oil. We all know what's happening to that. And looking at sort of where the country goes going forward and where the economy goes going forward, uh, this rapprochement with the U.S., I think the policymakers, I think, will tell you, uh, just makes sense when Cuba looks at its friends in the world and how it sustains its economy in light of all the challenges that it faces. All right. So still baby steps. We're not quite there yet. Yos Belibara, thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me.